We need complex female characters. You guys couldn't handle Princess Bob the Gum. Yes, I'm gonna add more to this list. Y'all couldn't handle Captain Marvel. You couldn't handle Pearl from Steven Universe. Y'all couldn't handle Katara. And y'all definitely couldn't handle Korra. Are you a fan of DC? Yes, of course I am. Same. Same. Uh, what's your favorite era? Probably back when women couldn't vote. What? If you ever want to prove that Middle Eastern people get no respect in America, look no further than Jesus. Let me preface this by saying I'm not a Christian, so I do not care what Jesus looks like. To be honest, I would prefer it if he was Vietnamese. That being said, the mental gymnastics that white people took to make that Arab man white, I, I'll never forget it. It's like when they put Jake Gyllenhaal in The Prince of Persia. They painted all these Keanu Reeves Jesuses, and then black people got mad, and they were like, well, it says in the Bible that he has hair of wool and skin of bronze. And the Arab community was like, see, we told you he's not white. And then the black community was like, exactly, Jesus is black. Bro, do y'all not know what Arabs look like? A lot of them got hair of wool and bronze skin. Especially 2,000 years ago when they didn't have sunscreen, so everybody was just getting crispy all day. I implore you to call an Uber in a metropolitan area and find me a driver who does not have bronze skin and hair of wool. I do not understand why y'all can't just let Jesus look like the people who were born where he was born. It's stupid. But once again, I'm not a Christian, so I don't care. I just think it's funny. What's a coincidence that you think about a lot? I'll go first. I think a lot about how the United States constantly cuts funding to rural schools, then coincidentally also pushes things like a very heavy religious and nationalist narrative in those areas, and at the same time has an incredibly strong military recruiting presence in those areas as well. What a weird coincidence. Oh, you watch Paul's Drag Race? Okay, no, it's like, it's fine. I just, I didn't realize like you were one of those gays, you know, it's it's not a big deal though. Yeah, my top Spotify artist of the year was actually Horton. Um, ever since he heard that who, he's just been making such great music. I, it's kind of underground, you probably wouldn't know it. Um, but I actually, that reminds me, you know the who that he heard? I'm serious, it, it was me, it was me. It, it was a couple years ago, I was with Cindy Lou, we were in WeHoo, and I said the funniest joke, and she laughed so hard, like she always does at my jokes, and I was laughing, and I was just laughing so loud that Horton heard me, yeah. No, I'm not saying he didn't do anything important, but the Lorax just gets a little bit too much hype. Like, I have been recycling my cans of hash for at least three years now, and no one talks about that. But the Lorax comes over here and speaks for the trees, and suddenly he's, you know, the head honcho. We're white trash. We're gonna need more ranch. We're white trash. We're gonna fix it with duct tape and a screwdriver. We're white trash. The one car family has registration expired in 2018. We're white trash. Our vacation's just gonna be time off from work. We're white trash. We don't speak to our racist family anymore. We're white trash. We're gonna wear fancy jeans to your event. We're white trash. We're gonna recognize that the social class system was created to divide the working class and pit us against each other, so we don't recognize how bad the owning class is treating us all. We're white trash. We're gonna have Stouffer's lasagna for dinner. Was anybody else taught from a young age that getting your period every month was your body punishing you for not being pregnant? When that's almost like the exact opposite of how things actually work. The bodies of people with reproductive organs are actually incredibly hostile towards embryos. The reason why medical professionals refer to a fetus or a zygote as parasitic in nature and it is because of the relationship that the fetus has with the pregnant person. A fetus will s literally suck the blood and nutrients of the person carrying said fetus. People who are pregnant build every single cell 
of a fetus during that nine month gestation period, right? Like there's a reason why miscarriages, which are also known medically as spontaneous abortions, there's a reason why they are so common. And this is how I know it is not about life because it is so taboo for women who have experienced miscarriages to actually talk about that loss. But if there is pretty much anything wrong with the developing fetus, the body will literally self-terminate it. And these self-terminations usually happen before people know that they're pregnant. They are very common. A lot of people assume that you can get pregnant on the first try when in fact it is actually incredibly common for couples who are perfectly healthy to attempt for months before they can get pregnant and it is incredibly common for people to undergo several miscarriages both early and later term before they have a successful pregnancy and the societal norms that we have around speaking about what pregnancy actually entails are all by design it is all part of the larger propaganda campaign to get people to just continue to pump out an endless exploitable workforce right and so the less you as the average person actually know about the dangers of pregnancy the more likely you are to advocate against your own best interest and the best interests of the people around you, particularly those with reproductive organs, because you have bought into the lies that reproduction is the most important thing, that a fetus is sentient or conscious, that a fetus deserves more rights than any other living, breathing human being, that women deserve less rights than anyone else, particularly not the right to body autonomy. That is the right to make decisions about what happens inside your body and with the things that are inside your body. Yeah, that super thick endometrial lining is meant to make the reproductive organs unhospitable for most embryos. So every month when it goes through the process of shedding that blood and tissue, it is so that it can essentially and efficiently eject all of the embryos that are deemed as unworthy, which is most of them. <laughs> like it really irks me when people argue that it is people with reproductive organs purpose to have babies like they don't realize just how a dangerous pregnancy is but just how much people with reproductive organs just how much our bodies actively fight to prevent that pregnancy from attaching just because it's something that can happen does not mean it's something that is safe right and does not mean that it is something that human beings are meant to or supposed to do right biology does not have a purpose biology just exists if we can downplay the dangers that people with uteruses go through every time they undergo a pregnancy well then you know we can argue against their health care like okay i get it i get i get that i'm autistic but it really irritates me that y'all don't see these patterns and y'all will go so close and you'll like argue and you're like i just care about life i just care about life but you refuse to pull back and take a look at the way that our society actually values and prioritizes life because you would know you would know like so quickly that that's bullshit like are y'all fall waterfall shh aunt lisa are you okay Oh my gosh, a happy holidays is a greeting lots of people use this time of the year, friend. I thought you might be hurt. They said that to be respectful, so let's use our walking feet. No, let's go take a big breath together. Aunt Lisa, is this a big problem or a little problem? Remember that problems come in different sizes and our emotions and our reactions do too? Right, there's no wrong answer, but it would really help me help you if we could think about that together. Was your favorite holiday included or were you excluded by what they said? No, catch a bubble. Hang on, please. There's room for everyone to celebrate different holidays. Got it, got it. There's a bunch coming up actually and we can learn about all of them together. No, I am not gonna make them tell you Merry Christmas, friend. They did not do anything wrong. I can see that you're having a really big feeling but that's not gonna change my mind, okay? I can sit with you and we can talk about it when you're ready. Bullying is being mean to someone on purpose multiple times. Have you seen this person before? Did they say happy holidays in a mean way? Did they tell you not to celebrate Christmas? Okay, well, I know it can be tough when someone says something you don't like. But... Okay, can you call? The silence from the Protect the Children crowd isn't deafening. It's expected. Historically, their child advocacy has been limited to white, cis, evangelical children raised in heteronormative households. Advocacy that claims it cares for children so greatly it storms school libraries to have American history erased and rewritten. Advocacy that claims it cares for children so much it ostracizes the very youth at greatest risk of a plethora of harms. Advocacy that refuses to listen to the voice of lived experience experts and actively silences survivors. 
advocacy that so severely lacks intersectionality, it actively harms the youth that need it the most. There is a reason we say we don't believe you when you scream protect the children. You are the very people the child advocacy and activism space consider unsafe for youth. Maybe no one's ever told you, so I will. We can see that your activism is simply a thinly veiled guise to insulate your bigotry. As my friend Portia says, if your activism is not intersectional, it's bullshit. What? Yes, I have an accent because I ain't from here. I was born in Thailand and I grew up in Georgia for a day. Let me ask y'all a very valid question. All right, try to stay here with me. You know, try to stay right here with me. Why is it you take a group of non-black people forcing their black sense, okay? One of them is from Utah. One of them is from Florida. One of them is from New York. One of them is from Wisconsin. One of them is from California. One of them is from Texas, right? You take all these non-black people forcing these black sense. You put them all in the room together. Why do they all sound the same? They all have the exact same forced black scent. Now, they're going to sit there and tell you, oh, it's because, you know, I grew up around black people. I grew up around black people. Hmm. That's very interesting because when you're at home with mom and dad, all that goes out the window. You you don't you haven't grown around black people when you with mom and dad. And I'm going to tell you the reason why is because it's not because you grew up around black people. It's because you fucking stole that goddamn um accent from the Internet. Because how is it all y'all sound the exact same no matter what state in the U.S. of A.? Okay, you get a non-black person with a forced black set, they all sound the same. There might be tiny different inflections and dialects because, okay, yeah, different states, blah, blah, blah. But y'all know what I'm saying. Also, you never, ever, ever hear a black person saying or doing this type of shit. Like somebody on Twitter just said, like, oh, you never hear a black person say, oh, you know, I grew up in flushing around a lot of Koreans, so that's why I speak with a Korean little accent. No, that does not happen. Because again, y'all love just stealing everything of ours. It's just inevitable for non-black people. Y'all just can never leave us alone. So I'm not buying it. And I don't care what nobody says. I don't care where you grew up. I just do not believe it. I really don't. I'm sorry. It's me, super corrupt American politician, telling you that you can no longer boycott. Sorry, it's against the law now. Anti-boycott bill. Bam! Okay, you have to buy Starbucks and eat a four-piece McNugget. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna do that. This comment reads, I appreciate this take. I have no money and I'm disabled, but I have a phone and my hands still work. There's a lot I can still do. And with that, I think it's a really important time to start talking about the difference between allyship and solidarity and how this is a great example of the latter. So when we talk about allyship, it usually describes the relationship between somebody with privilege and a community without that particular privilege, right? So if a white person says, oh, I'm an ally to the black community, it implies I am not in the black community, but you know, I feel for you dog. And same thing with like, if you're an ally to the queer community, but you are a straight person, like, yeah, I'm not in there with y'all, but I will, you know, I don't like what's happening to you, which is cool, but there are a couple things wrong with that, right? First, it doesn't really necessitate any type of meaningful action. Second of all, it still centers people who do have privilege you know what i'm saying it still doesn't really center um in my examples the black community or the queer community it centers the individual an individual who in some cases is likely already being centered by the mainstream hegemony solidarity is very different than that solidarity says in whichever ways i can i am choosing to opt into your struggle in whatever ways i have access to I will act as though it is happening to me. When I look in the mirror, I see you. I might not have much, you might not have much, but what we have is each other. When we stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine, we are opting into their struggle and saying, y'all are really, really, really not alone. Where allyship says, hey, like I'm on your side, solidarity says none of us are free until all of us are free. Solidarity says everything I do for the people of Palestine, I do for myself because as far as I'm concerned, I see no difference. 
So to quickly wrap up and running the risk of being redundant, right? Where allyship necessitates both privilege and separation, solidarity, my understanding of solidarity at least, right? Um, mobilizes every resource on behalf of the people with whom we are in solidarity. Asking if baristas should make as much money as doctors is just a more polite way of asking if baristas should have the same quality of life as physicians, as doctors. Because framing it to make it just about money is nicer than just openly admitting that some people should have better lifestyles than others simply because their job is X. And before you say it, like, yeah, I know that we need incentives for people to do certain jobs, but especially with healthcare where it's literally life and death, I would hope that the incentive for people to go into those fields is not because of the pay. I would hope that the pay is just kind of seen as a bonus and that this is truly their passion considering that they're going to have their patients' lives in their hands. And when I break down why people say that we need those incentives for specifically a field like a doctor, a lot of people fall back on well it's so much school well it's so much time okay then the incentives should reflect that we should give them alternative schedules we should give them free school we should give people ubi so that they don't have to worry about that as they go through said school making upper education free do you know how many more people would be able to actually follow through with their interest in medicine if it weren't for the cost but yeah i don't think that baristas should have an inherently worse quality of life simply because they are baristas and not doctors yours truly the communist who's finishing up her master's in public health before going to med school. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. No matter how aware or culturally sensitive you may think you are, there's always room to grow. I'm Taiwanese and not only did I go to an international school before moving to the United States where I was exposed to more cultures than the average person, but I also actively participated in dialogue about diversity and inclusion during my time in college. I have a high level of awareness when it comes to conversations around race, but just because I am a person of color and have experienced racial aggressions and microaggressions firsthand, it doesn't mean I get a free pass when I accidentally stereotype or say culture insensitive things. I will never forget my embarrassing moment in the year that the Black Panther movie came out. I had seen several viral videos about how black athletes were doing the Wakanda sign after winning their games by crossing their arms across their chest, showing how this gesture had become a symbol of empowerment. Shortly after, I was at a dance competition to support my collegiate dance team and chatting amongst alumni. One of my favorite teams, an African diasporic dance group, was up next to perform. Thinking of that video with the athletes, I excitedly turned to my friend next to me and said, I hope they do the Wakanda sign at the end, to which my friend's response was, what the heck, that's so racist. My first reaction was shock, and then embarrassment followed. In my own little head, I had watched this video on social media and assumed that everyone would know what I was talking about. Then with no context, I had connected the one African dance group to a popular fictional Afrofuturistic movie. If one of the Asian cultural dance groups had come out on stage and someone said, I hope they do something Mulan related at the end, I'd probably feel the same annoyance the way my friend did with me. It was simply an unnecessary comment that I had made from a place of endearment but didn't realize how it would sound. I felt really dumb in that moment and I learned from that. It doesn't matter how innocent your intentions are if what you said made a negative impact. Welcome back to Stupid Rich People Fashion. Today, let's look at some denim. These are $2,450 from Balenciaga. Don't think they're terrible enough? Let's look at the back. Yep, there it is. That's the Balenciaga I know. But if those weren't shredded enough for you, let me introduce Rick Owen's Dark Shadow Collection. Nearly $2,000 to look like you lost the fight with the lawnmower. Or, for more stratified destruction, you could go with these. $1,500 shredded Detroit cut. I don't know what that means. You might as well call this collection Fancy If You're Rich, Trashy If You're Poor. By Rick Owens. 
It's Women's History Month, so I'm gonna talk about all the words people might be saying instead of woman to try to be more inclusive of trans identities and the shortcomings of all of them. Context I think they make sense in and context they don't, like their actual applicable uses and my own personal opinions of them. I don't think we need a replacement for women's history because trans women are included in the category of woman, but woman but with an X? Personally, I think this is one of the most useless ones because who is it for? Like it on one hand has non-binary people who aren't women now being called woman except spelled different and on the other hand implies that the term woman has to be changed in some way to include trans women but trans women are women i feel like it implies clumping all non-binary people into women and othering trans women from the category of woman it just feels unnecessary i also think that if there are non-binary people that feel included in woman with an x that's great like i think that a personal identity descriptor is probably the best use for this term woman and non-binary people when you say this one ask yourself do you really mean woman and non-binary people or do you just mean woman and people you still see as women because i think this one has practical uses when someone really means yeah all non-binary people and all women like probably a lot of the same context you'd say someone that's not a man it's on a technical level not a bad term at all i just think it's been used in some sneakily transphobic ways afabs and using assigned gender at birth language in general assigned gender at birth language is tired because gender at birth language was initially used for trans people to talk about our medical transitions, not for cis people to categorize us and ask about our genitals. I pretty much don't use assigned gender at birth language at all anymore unless I'm talking about like only myself and when I'm talking about specific medical history. I personally don't think we should let cis people get too comfortable with that one. So I think like AFABs and women and NBs both absolutely have their place in conversation and can be used, but I want to make a part two of some terms that I prefer in more situations. And he designed some boxer briefs that both men and women and non-binary people of all um, gender appropriations and the pronouns, everyone is included. I didn't want this to be boxers are from Koala was a paid actor. The fishermen are just a bunch of crybabies. The world government doesn't do anything excessively evil. Prejudice breeds stability in the One Piece universe. Akainu did nothing wrong. Ace was a fucking criminal. Kuma was grooming jewelry Bonnie. He should be lucky his buccaneer ass doesn't get cut down by the minority hunter. The celestial dragons did nothing wrong. They were simply born into wealth. It's the laziest and worst part about Oda's writing. But you know what the best part is? The opportunity to gamble. I'm taking bets. Who's gonna win? Mihawk or Shanks? Who's gonna own the world? Emu or Blackbeard? We're, what? You wanna place a hundred on Crocodile being Luffy's mom? Easy money. Look, if a character doesn't have hockey, I don't give a f I'm here for the fights and the power scaling. And I just gotta say, it's obvious that Yamato is a woman. Have you seen cover 1084? Yes, of course, Kiku is a woman, but that's because I'm attracted to her. Son of Kaido is obviously just a nomenclature. One Piece isn't political, and even when it is, it's mostly critical of the left. Oda doesn't write the Marines as bad guys, they're just there to uphold order. Whose order do they uphold? That doesn't matter. They're there to stop the scary pirates. Yes, I realize Luffy is a pirate, but what's your point? I hope Kobe and Smoker can reform the Marines and they make Luffy into a warlord so he's not a criminal anymore. I love One Piece, but I hate Bon Clay. His depiction is so stereotypical. Bon Clay is the best. Oda likely didn't intend this, but he made a genderqueer character before the word had any relevancy at all. Yes, I know his design is rooted in harmful depictions of Japanese crossdressers, but the substance of his character is so much deeper than what we would have expected when you look at him in the early part of the series. And honestly, reclaiming a slur and putting it in fat ass letters on your back is camp as f One Piece has the best depiction of the ruling elite ever seen in media. We see it in their grotesque inbred looks and their terrible personalities and their stupid spacesuits like they're a bunch of idiot Elon Musks. And isn't it funny? that out of all the groups, pirates, marines, warlords, and emperors, only the revolutionary army is seen in a positive light consistently. Oda even has a poster of Che Guevara in his studio. It'll never cease to amaze me how unfathomably based One Piece is for a shonen franchise. ML really stands for Monkey D. Luffyism. Luffy is peak praxis. 
You know what's wild to me? The fact that Angola prison is still open. It was a plantation. It's still a plantation. It was called Angola because that's where the people who were enslaved were from. Then after the Civil War, it became a convict leasing prison. All the black people who thought they were free, they got arrested for breathing, being, and believing in a better life. Funneled right into these prisons. They were literally plantations rebranded for prisoners rather than slaves. Now it is the largest maximum security prison in the United States. It's still a plantation with some buildings on it. You ever see a prison look like this? You can't tell me that's not an overseer looking over his slaves. But that's just Angola prison. Look, this is what I want y'all to know. We know black people have been arrested and funneled into prisons at disproportionate rates. We know prisons as we know them now come right out of slavery. And we know Southern soil in particular is soaked with our blood. But what I don't understand is where the immediacy is at. The very present need to end slavery right now. Angola prison kept Albert Woodfox, a New Orleans Black Panther. They kept him in solitary confinement for 40 years. Longer than any human being. No light, no people, very little sound, no real bathroom. Solitary confinement takes away all your senses. Didn't that drive you crazy? Not only is Angola prison a plantation, it's where they test torture. And many of us sleep every night like this is normal. Look, I'm not offering nothing new today. I just want you to wake up and see what's right in front of you. Where's Harriet? Where's Frederick? Who are you?